What's up Savvy Expats? Today we have another special interview because I am with a past client of mine who we have assisted and situated in BGC hailing all the way from California. Brian, it's a pleasure to have you on. Mm -hmm. Nice to be here. Amazing. So Brian, before we get into anything else and dive into your experiences living in the Philippines for the past few months, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your life back in the States? Uh, yeah, sure. I was um, working in IT for a good you know, 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, born and raised in California, uh, living in the Sacramento area. And I just <coughs> got to a point where I wanted, you know, a little bit more from life, you know, rather than doing the same old thing. And decided to look around and see my options and uh, ended up liking VGC and liking the Philippines and, and uh, looking into coming here and starting starting a new life, starting to do, do different things. Amazing. So, I mean, you mentioned that you're doing IT back in, in California mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, California, it, it is a, it's a nice state, at least when you, the area that you were in, would you yeah, say? Yeah. yeah, yeah, really nice area, yeah. Yeah, nice area. IT is a good paying job. I mean, for most people, they'd picture that to be the American dream. But I mean, what specifically about the Philippines appealed to you to make that, that leap of faith here? Uh, it's funny you say that. And definitely the, the, the whole American dream thing. Yeah, it's like I, I had the good job. Um, I lived in a good neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you're like, why are you giving that up? Um, I just uh, wanted to see more of the world, mm -hmm. uh, really. Right. Um, and to gain a sense of independence, you know, to, from, that, from that lifestyle of having to put in that time and effort and work. And, right. Uh, and I feel like I've gotten that now that I'm here, basically. Right. And, I mean, you're around other people in Cali. You had friends there. We were talking about earlier. And did you get any uh, feedback from your friends about your decision to move abroad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Like, it's, like, like we were talking earlier, I, I, I expected some sort of negativity, but it wasn't that way at all. A lot of people were like, oh, wow, you know, good for you. you know, a lot of people had a positive uh, positive feedback mm -hmm. on that, you know, like when I when I left, and and still in, in touch with some a couple of people back there, and you know, it's it's all good. Mm -hmm. So taking it back to where our uh, our relationship first started, I mean, we were talking about how how many months ago would you say on call, like oh, wow. four or five months ago now, right? At least uh, it was last year. I know. That. Oh, <laughs> I think it was wow. last year, wasn't it? Or was it January, February? I don't think it was last year. I think it's February. Uh, yeah, January, February. January, February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so around Feb January, February, we were talking. And I mean, yeah. what made you want to initially hop on call with me for your Philippine move? Well, it seemed like not overwhelming, but there was so much to do. Right. There was so many things to take care of. And just having somebody on this side of things to help organize that was a big part of my decision to... To, to do that and, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah that, that helped out a lot mm -hmm. and we were talking about earlier it really struck me because I think you put it into perfect words how you, not only you felt but also how most expats feel making that transition to the Philippines and the way you described it as it can be very daunting yeah yeah right so that being said what what would you say were the biggest concerns or bottlenecks leading up to this uh, this big transition well, it, well, when I say daunting, it seemed like there was so much to do, so much to take care of mm -hmm. uh, prior to getting here. And then once you're here, then it's the matter of getting settled here. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had to, you, you have to downsize everything into something you can move, <laughs> right. for, move forward with. So, uh, yeah, and that is, that, that can be overwhelming, I think, to, to a lot of people where mm -hmm. cause there's so much to take care of in order to make it all happen. Gotcha. So, I mean, ultimately, the navigating <clears throat> not only how to take care of all of your loose ends in the States, but also how to take care of your transition here to the Philippines in a country that's not your own, Yeah. Uh, you know, com halfway across the world. Yep. I mean, I'm sure that... Other side of the planet. Yeah, other, yeah <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I'm sure that can seem like a big, uh, you know, a big obstacle that you're facing. And, I mean, that leads me to ask, how did our our help and our services help you overcome that? Well, yeah, that was uh, one of the things that was really good is that you know, here I was needing to find a place to stay and, and get settled. And it was, uh, 
it was it was really nice to just that was taken care of for me where I could you know I just I'd get texts in the morning and it's like right. oh yeah here's what we have today set up for you to look at okay yeah meet me here all right mm -hmm. it's good you know you'd pick me up or whatever and right check everything out and it was uh yeah that was uh, good to have that piece as something I didn't have to sit mm -hmm. there and I, I didn't have to go you know all over the world or well, not all over the world but you know uh, walk around everywhere and yeah set something up not worry about being scammed exactly that type of thing yeah I think I've seen a lot of a lot of expats when they come out here for the first time they they do experience those kind of obstacles in their mm -hmm. first move just because they don't know who to talk to which places to move to which areas to navigate so I mean that's that's great and was there any reason specifically why you wanted to use help as opposed to doing this move by yourself uh, what well, I believe I said, might have said this on our call is that you know you can have a good faster sheet pick too and mm -hmm. I, I needed something you know I'm willing to pay for the service in order to get you know good service mm -hmm. and to have that have that burden lifted you know we're talking about things being daunting well that's one less thing you got to worry about mm -hmm. if you have somebody there feeling all that out for you. Exactly, exactly. So having like that peace of mind, right? Yes, peace of mind, exactly. Right. Kind of switching gears a little bit, um, you know, you're moving to a country in Southeast Asia where I'm mm -hmm. sure it's much more affordable than than California. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about like expenses if you're with what you're comfortable with. Um, how much were you spending in rent or whatever you're paying? Were you spending rent in California? Uh, I had my own house, so oh, okay. I had a mortgage. Had a mortgage, um, okay. Versus here in the Philippines, how much? Yeah, rent in California versus here in the Philippines, what does that compare? Well, if I was going to do a rent comparison to where I lived, uh, it would be triple, at least. <laughs> triple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it would be, uh, I, would, I was paying triple what I pay here. No kidding. Wow, I mean, we are in, I would say, like, BGC is the most expensive city in the Philippines, but yep. it's still far more affordable than, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it, living it, in the West. It, it, this is uh, much, much more affordable than mm -hmm. any, just about any large mm -hmm. city, good neighborhood in, in the USA. Mm -hmm. Oh, something that I really like that we talked about earlier is uh, your four C's. I think that's something that's that would be very helpful for most for most expats looking for a place to live. Okay. Can you can you share with them the four C's? <laughs> yeah, of, the four C's. Uh, <laughs> something something uh, as far as a checklist of of uh, what to look for wherever wherever you're moving. Mm -hmm. uh, number one being cost, uh, the most important. But then uh, crime, <laughs> uh, climate, and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I really like the culture here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's low, low, low cost, and as far as crime goes, the BGC is the safest, one of the safest places I've ever been, uh, tr quite truthfully. And then, and as far as climate goes, <laughs> it, it's either 80 or it's 90. You're, you're yeah. not going to get much different, you know, and it's raining or it's not. Exactly. But, you know, that, that's your that's your climate here in the Philippines that I've experienced. Exactly. But, but yeah, you know, I, I, that's. That's my four C's checklist as far as wherever you want to move in the world. And I, and I can imagine that's why you chose BGC specifically. Mm -hmm. um, was there any other reasons why you chose this city in Manila as opposed to like living in the provinces or down in Cebu or something? Uh, well, I had a five, I'll add a fifth C then, uh, convenience. There you go. Um, the five C's now. Yeah. Updated checklist from Brian. <laughs> yeah. five, five C's, yeah. Convenience. Everything here is... Or everything's here. I mean, I to, to sum it up, you know, I, I wanted to keep my Western lifestyle, for back, lack of a better term. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I like having good internet. I like having reliable electricity and all that good stuff that you're not going to get in some of the other places around right. around the Philippines. Um, and, and as far as convenience, everything as we were talking about before, it's it's walking distance to everything. I can, mm -hmm. I don't have a car. I don't have that cost anymore. Um, I can walk to shop, I can walk to the mall, and any type of nightlife for a better term. Mm -hmm. you know, all of that's right here, or you can, you can get a, a ride to it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, here in BGC, you really have all you can really ask for as far yes. as convenience. And that's, what's, that's what you're really paying for, is uh, that convenience mm -hmm. and having such an urbanized city with good infrastructure. Yep. We mentioned it earlier, like, we don't want to have to worry about having blackouts or, or brownouts um, here in, in 
in the Philippines and just to have no. that, you know, having a stable internet connection, like those little yeah, yeah. conveniences is important for us to have on a daily basis. And when we do want to take a trip out to experience what people would call authentic Philippines, and you can take a weekend trip out like how you went to Bohol, right? Oh yeah, that, that's I think the greatest thing. You're only like half an hour from yep. the airport, you know, a quick grab ride and uh, tickets are cheap. Mm. You, for less than $100 US, you can get a, a ticket to any of the nice resorts, mm. uh, like we're talking Bahal, Boracay. Um, I still plan on going to Shargao or, yeah. and some of the other places. Absolutely, so as far as uh, your, your experience living in BGC overall, how would, you, how would you rate it, how would you describe it? Uh, I got no regrets and, mm. and I'm certainly not disappointed. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I like it here. I mean, you know, the only downside I can think of is that, uh, yeah, it's a pretty dense city, so you got your pollution and, and, and some noise. That's mm. about it. But uh, the convenience, the safety, uh, this is hard to beat and oh, yeah. at, at the cost that you Absolutely. That you're spending for it. Absolutely, yeah. And then that's ultimately why I really tout BGC a lot in the videos. and Because it's just very convenient for an expat that's moving to Southeast Asia for the first time to transition to BGC instead of straight into the middle of like no man's land in, in yeah. the province, right? So, yeah, switching gears a little bit more, uh, Brian, let's talk a little bit about your culture shocks. Have you experienced any culture shocks living in the Philippines? Uh, yeah. Um... I initially was thinking I'd move to Cebu, mm -hmm. and my initial trip I out here last year I went down to Cebu and mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah you know you 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 see a lot of poverty and mm -hmm. and struggle there you know in, in a lot of a lot of places and uh, yeah yeah I mean it's it's a different different thing than a lot of people in the West are used to seeing mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, you know, you, you sort of just got to realize that's the way it is you know, right. in certain places. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, it's part of like when you leave the U.S., I think for most that have been born and raised there, mm -hmm. you come out to other sides of the world and that's going to be the immediate culture shock is seeing the poverty firsthand. Yeah, yeah and it's not just the Philippines here. I mean, you, yeah. you're going to see the same thing in Mexico or South America, lots of places in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as your experience with renting here, was there any differences between renting in the Philippines versus the States? Uh, well, the way they structure the rental contracts is a little different in, in some, some ways. Uh, yeah. But I think they're just trying to protect themselves from, you know, some foreigners trying to get over on them, I guess. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah. No, no, it's not a lot, a lot different. You just yeah. have to um, navigate through it. I think that's the only difference, or one of the main differences, is that a lot of the rental contracts here, for the most part, is a you have to put down a two-month advance of rent yeah. and a two-month two deposit. And two. Yeah. two and two, which is uh, when I tell most foreigners that that's how it's structured here, they're like, "What? That's crazy!" Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I thought, yeah. The, I thought the same thing. And, yeah. and some of the places were even saying they wanted a lot more upfront, and I was like, mm -hmm. "I'm not doing that." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but you know, like the place I ended up getting was a two and two, and mm -hmm. and uh, the owners, <laughs> I haven't, haven't had any problems with the owner and, and the relationship at all. So it's good. Very good. And so as far as your social life here in the Philippines, how have you been treated by the locals here? Ah, surprisingly well. Yeah. Uh, like I said, you know, the, of the four C's, the culture. Um, and the, it seems like the Philippines culture is one of, very much one of respect. Right. And it's just, you know, you, you be respectful, they're going to be respectful, and, and everybody gets along just fine. Yeah. Um, that, that's one of the really good things about here everybody's nice yeah absolutely and that's that's one of the main reasons why people come to the philippines it's, it's attraction point is yeah. the hospitality of yeah, absolutely. the locals hospitality the there you go that's, that's yeah. the word i was looking for 100 percent. all right so wrapping this up uh brian what are your plans from here on out in the philippines uh, you could go back to the states could work more what do you what, what what are the oh, future right. looking like? Well, future plans are yeah. to get to know more of the Philippines and uh, uh, to travel and, and see see more of this place. You know, mm -hmm. I want to 
there, there, there's so much to see. So mm. I want to go to the different islands. I want to um, try scuba diving. Mm -hmm. I've done some, done some snorkeling, gone to different places there, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to get out and do more there. Um, the volcanoes, mm -hmm. you know, the mountains, nice. the, the waterfalls, there's so much here. Yep. So I want to get out and experience more. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Well, Brian, it was a pleasure having you on. It was also a pleasure working with you towards this next chapter of your life. And uh, we hope the best for you, for your time out here in the Philippines. <laughs> and for you guys that are watching, if you want a transition like Brian, a smooth transition like Brian, as we just went over as well, you can book a call with me in the link down below, and I'll see for a good fit to work together if you're moving here within the next one or four months. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. God bless. Mm -hmm.